Well, it depends a little bit what sort of foreign correspondent you are. For example, obviously there are still foreign correspondents for newspapers, for radio, for television and so on. Uh, but increasingly, the more multimedia you can be, the better your chance of making ends meet. Partly because a lot of the staff jobs are starting to be eroded nowadays and a lot of people out in the field are freelance or only semi-sponsored. So if you can go and cover a story and do it for online, uh, do a print version, maybe do a radio, maybe do a tele version, it makes it easier for you to survive commercially. It shouldn't make any difference at all. Um, I suppose the reality is that in some countries where the roles of men and women are quite strictly defined, people react to you in a slightly different way. For example, I work a lot in Pakistan and Afghanistan and in India, um, and sometimes there are issues about access. In some ways it can be a little bit easier that people may feel they should be politer to you if they feel that traditionally their role is to be polite to women. Um, and sometimes people are more confused by you because they sort of feel a woman shouldn't be going off to dangerous places doing this sort of thing and they're not quite sure what to make of you. Uh, in fact we sometimes think they, they think of us as sort of the third gender, we're not quite men and we're not quite women, we're sort of foreign women and that's something a little bit different. I suppose one aspect of being able to travel a lot in foreign countries as a journalist is that you get used to a certain level of access and to a meeting a, a very broad range of people. Um, so for example if I go on holiday somewhere I get quite frustrated that I feel I'm not really seeing the real place um, because I'm not going to go into the brothels to meet the women who are working there and talk to them about their life and their work or go into the slums and talk to people and equally I'm not going to go into the, the palace or the government and talk to people there uh, because as, as, a, you know, as a normal person obviously you don't get that sort of access. You do get a tremendous range as a correspondent. I sometimes think in a way you get a slightly skewed sense because you tend to see people by definition at, at times of crisis. So you often see all the problems in a country um, and you don't often just see normal life people getting on who are perfectly happy and their lives are going along quite well. So that in a sense gives you a rather unfair picture of other countries. Well it is getting tougher uh, but the good news is in a way there's a lot more opportunity if you're prepared to take the initiative. I think in the olden days people tended to be based with a mother organisation like the BBC or like a big newspaper and then be deployed out into the field as a correspondent and that's basically how my career went. Um, but increasingly that is getting tough because there are fewer and fewer correspondents being used in that way with full-time staff jobs out in the field. So now often it's a question of just setting up somewhere, getting a sense of which countries, which places, perhaps somewhere you speak the language or where you have a particular affinity, uh, but also places where there is a gap in the market and then offering your material on a freelance basis to wh you know, whoever's interested. It's getting tougher but if you really want to do it then you'll find a way and I think it's one of the best careers in the world, so don't give up.